Alright, welcome back to uh, my little Geekery's Adventures in Altera. Uh, when last we met, uh, Luau was, had uh, gone to, had finally gotten to the temple and went on a little excursion into a uh, seaside cave uh, where he discovered the lair of at least, at, at least one thief. He, he honestly doesn't know. He, he had heard later on that they, that that whoever was was actually living in the cave had since taken off, um, but he uh, went in, uh, discovered it, that uh, there was a a uh, sort of a thieves hideaway in there with some stolen goods. Um, he had originally gone in there to look for someone's lost dog, which is apparently a thing you do when somebody has when when in, when a different nobleman has has lost a a an animal um he actually ended the adventure finding uh the lost dog um and w to which the nobleman didn't after even even went back to actually give the dog back to the nobleman say i found your dog and the nobleman just went oh you you were doing that oh i'm i really didn't care <laughs> so he just, so Luau just sort of kept the dog. Um, he also found a snapping turtle in, in an underground river um, and brought and brought that back out because the, the turtle would have probably have died um, within the cave. So he, so he, so he also he has a snapping turtle too with a jade uh, shell. So he so he has named uh, both animals. Um, he has decided to keep the Sir uh, part of, of the dog's name. I'm not entirely certain that Luau realizes that Sir wasn't, that Sir is an honorific, and the nobleman gave the dog the honorific of Sir as just a joke. I don't, I, he doesn't entirely realize that. Common is not his native language. So he, <laughs> So he kept Sir, um, but he changed the actual name of the dog to Kujero, uh Courage. He's Courage the dog. And uh, the snapping turtle, he has named Jade, uh, Jade. So it, it, was, it was obvious. It, 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 the turtle has a, a, a actual stone jade shell. So he, it's, well, let's just do the obvious thing and just, and just name it Jad. So that is what he did. And, uh, well, he has, he has just left the temple at this point, and he is on his way home. Uh, traveling along the road, um, he has decided to sort of head south a little bit, because uh, just going, just heading straight back the same route to home. Uh, he, he, already, he already knows what's there. He's, he's been there, done that, uh, so he's decided to take a, a different path um, along, along uh, the southern border of of the country of, of his home country of Salune, uh, and uh, which is where a lot of uh, open farm area is located within the hills, just south of the major tree line. Um, there are there are plenty of elven farmers, but uh, more important of note, there are th this is actually where halflings uh, tend to dwell in the hills uh, between the um, human empire. Uh, to the south and Solune, there's a bit of a, a sort of a, a gray area where just sort of halfling towns uh, dwell. Um, they're not the, as a people. They're they actually tend to be they tend to be referred to as small folk, as hill folk, um, as hillings, H I L L I N G S, um, and although actually call them uh, small folk some fairy folk actually get a little offended uh, because they're even shorter than halflings so why are you calling them small folk to us they're tall folk it's it, it's a thing so <laughs> they also they have their halflings also aren't entirely happy to actually be called halflings because what do you half half of half a what you're you're calling us half a thing. That's it's rather offensive, isn't it? Um, most of them don't. Most of them don't really care either way. But some of them do actually get a little offended by that. Um, 
So hillings actually tends to be a, a more common term to, to call them. So uh, Luau has uh, is decided to head south, um, actually joining up with with some uh, with some merchants um, as they as they head south. Uh, he has his he has his dog Sir Courage, and his snapping turtle. He's actually he's actually purchased um, a bit of a bit of space on a wagon for uh, his turtle because he doesn't want to just he doesn't have any other really good way to carry his his snapping turtle so he's purchased he's purchased a bit of a, a big uh, big crate and um, and he's per and uh, to, to put his his turtle in and uh, when they actually when the caravan stops to rest he will actually take his turtle out of out of his crate and and let him you know, wander off and, and munch and, and do turtley things. Uh, but as they, as they come, as they, as, uh, they head south, the, uh, caravan sort of stops into a town and, uh, Luera is able to, uh, head off, head off to an inn, see what's going on. And that's when he discovers that, uh, there, there are some goings on happening. Um, and this is where the adventure starts. Um, I, it, uh, I'm recording this just maybe an hour after I had actually seen a post on my Twitter feed. My Twitter feed, by the way, is at my little geekery. If, if you want to actually follow me on Twitter, I don't necessarily follow back, but I, I like to see things that people have available and projects that you're working on because I may literally be interested in them. In this case, it was actually uh, someone posting a little um, adventure uh, called Harrowing Hay Night. It is uh, written and illustrated by Inf Infernalisha, In Infern, 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 Infernchil, Infernchil Studios. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not entirely certain how to pronounce that. Um, I'm, I, I will have a link available to, uh, to drive through RPG for this. Uh, it wandered into, it wandered into my Twitter feed, and I went, ooh, 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 I want that. I, I totally want that. I was working on something different for this adventure, uh, but I came across this instead, and I went, ooh, that sounds interesting. I think I'll, I think I'll use that instead. And uh, it, it begins thusly. Uh, we are. Uh, travels off to an inn to get something to drink, a little something to eat, and he overhears some locals talking about uh, talking about Harold Haynight, uh, who is who is a halfling farmer, and he apparently has been having some issues uh, lately. He he has apparently had he he's had some vandalism on his farm. And he doesn't know what's causing it. Um, apparently, it started as scarecrows, and Harold apparently has has come in and has asked people to to uh, to help him sort of discern what is is causing the vandalism in in his in his farm. And everybody just sort of shrugs it off as, "Oh, it's a it's a bunch of stupid kids doing stupid stuff," and it and it started apparently as as uh, scarecrows um, in his fields getting destroyed. It's also entirely possible that it could be crows or something because crows are, are, are intelligent and, and weird like that. Um, but uh, nobody's actually taking it seriously. Um, and he's, he apparently has, has been coming into town and getting more and more anxious about, about the safety of his family and no one is taking him seriously. They, they're not, they're, it's like, it, it, it come, look, t tell us, tell us when you see a bear or a monster or something. Don't, don't, don't bother us with such trivial things. And, um, but Luer actually, he's, he's seen a few weird things. So he is going to, he's going to investigate this because it's, I mean, he doesn't, doesn't really think that anyone anyone should actually who requires who's asking for help 
should just be dismissed so quickly because there's just, you know, it, sometimes you just get, you know, bad feelings about something and it's just, and if nobody takes you seriously and, so, and something happens, then, you know, just, it's like, why didn't, why didn't somebody do something to, to help out? So, you know what, he's actually, he's going to, Luer is going to head to the Hay Knight Farm. He's going to ask the, pay, he's going to ask these fellows, all right, where, where is the Hay Knight Farm? And uh, so he can, so he can have a little chat with Harold himself, because this is, this is silly that nobody's actually seems to be even remotely interested in helping and helping out poor Harold. Ah, uh, let's see. And on to the adventure. Um, uh, also, as a side note, I, I'm not sure that I actually reiterated this the last time. I do not read these adventures beforehand. I would like to be, I, I might read like a really quick overview as to what they're about, but I won't, I will not actually read the adventure until I, until I actually start playing. That way I, I'm not prepared for what is coming later on. So just as, as a as a sort of a bit of a, a bizarre disclaimer, um, because I am because these I am playing these as solo adventures. This actually is intended uh, to be you to be played with a group of of one to five characters. So I am so I figure you know a one second level character uh, with a with with a dog at his side would be would be fine. He's gonna leave his snapping turtle. Um, and he's going to take his dog, and he's going to ride out to the Hay Knight Farm. Okay, let's see. A uh, local farmer named Harold Hay Knight lives with his family on a farm a few miles south. He has reported an unknown mischievous presence at night, which has been vandalizing his farm. What started as defacing his scarecrows has now become something that makes him fear for his family. Okay. The Hay Knight Farm is known locally for producing the largest pumpkins in the region each autumn. Oh, that's lovely. Each of their record-setting pumpkins has been magically preserved on their property. Oh, I do love, I would actually love to, like to say I love magical preservation spells. I just, I, I do. I love them. He's gone, he's actually gone out of his way to, to preserve his, his award-winning pumpkins for, for posterity. That's lovely. I, I, that's fantastic. I would actually like to see his giant pumpkins. I mean, I know of, I know of gourds, I know of squash, but I don't, I'm not really sure that I've, I've seen like really large pumpkins. That would be fantastic. Let's see. I arrive at the location on a crisp and clear autumn night under a full moon. That, that tracks. That certainly tracks. It is, in fact, autumn. By the way, I, I'm not sure if I made that clear, but it is, in fact, autumn. Um, so, yes. Walking up the cobbled path, you see a large wooden farmhouse, two barns, and hundreds of pumpkins, many of which are larger than five foot in diameter. Hmm. The house is shuttered and dark. The sound of a horse can be heard in the distance. Well, that's slightly creepy. I suppose I should go up and knock on the door. Large wooden farmhouse, all the windows are shuttered, no light can be seen from the inside, nor noise can be heard from the inside. Uh, well, let's see about that. Yeah, no, I'm not hearing anything. That's really quite, it's really quite unfortunate. Okay. Well, let's, let's take a look and see the, I don't know, maybe the farmer has already left. Let's take a look. Let's take, let's, let's wander around this here place. Um, hmm. I've got a couple of, I've got a couple of barns here. Let's, I don't know, even odd. Right, we'll be even. Well, let's let's head let's head off to my right. Uh, let's see, large barn, large barn stables some horse. Well, in this case, ponies. It's gonna it's gonna stable some ponies that the halflings have. 
there's probably considering that he also considering that he also um, is a farmer and he's got very large produce there's probably a couple of different carts in there too maybe even a wagon uh, hmm nothing else in there though well let's try the other barn then uh, let's see the smaller barn is actually more of a shed filled with farming equipment hmm all right well let's see what's behind the house I don't actually want they may not they may be hiding inside of the house too I don't know let's let's go take a look out back oh there seems to be a door on this side of the house leading to a root cellar it's locked from the inside oh well okay well I'm going to sort of tap on on the wooden door I will announce myself as Lua Dotum and I am I am the elven prince of of the northern realm of Salune and I have I have come to to see if you require any assistance to which I get a response go away <laughs> sir you requested help <laughs> I demand that you open this door. Ooh, let's let's do a let's do an intimidation check. It's not it's not a strong suit, but let's take a. Oh. I am I am I have a pretty little Elven Prince. I don't I don't intimidate well. <laughs> but the farmer the farmer rolled rolled even worse. <laughs> I'm terrible, but he's also scared, so he opens the door for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he and his family are are huddled in the cellar. Um, so I I tell them that I am here. They tell me that there is a terrible spirit uh, plaguing their their farm. And if they are able, and if and if Luera is able to help them uh, get out. Um, then they will they will happily pay me for my services, but they need to be able to get to the barn, um, and 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 uh, attach a pony to a cart and and to get everybody to safety. And so, well, um, I didn't see any spirits while I was out and about. Then again, I didn't I wasn't looking for spirits. I was I was looking for them. I just wanted to make sure that the family was all right. But all right, um, then I will, I will go back out, and I will, and I will draw my short sword, a a, a short sword, because I I left my I left my horse near the front of the house, um, and my dog is with me. The dog actually is, is, looking a little spooked. He's 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 actually on alert, which is which is definitely telling me something. Um, well, okay. Well, the dog definitely thinks that something's not quite right here. So I will, I will take, I will take Courage's sign that there is indeed something amiss. Um, and I will, and I will escort the family to the barn rather quickly so they can, so they can, uh, harness up a horse, pony, pony, halflings, halflings have ponies. Uh, they can harness up a pony, get on a wagon, and take off. Uh, that will take that will take a few minutes, um, and I'm at the I'm at the uh, front of the barn when I hear the, the loud screech of a horse, just this loud, just echoing whinny from outside, and I see a glowing blue figure of a rider. And his horse galloping up along the path toward the house. Just this awesome, awesome forceful glow. Does he have does he have a fear attack? He should have a fear attack. I would think that a that a ghostly horseman would sort of strike fear. He doesn't really seem to though. Huh. Huh. Okay. Well, hmm. That's interesting. 
Okay, well, I, I actually, there's, he's actually rather imposing. Um, I'm not, hmm, I'm not entirely sure what, what to do. Uh, crap, um, uh, 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 Luera is going to, gonna stick his, the ed, edge of his, of his, uh, sword into, into uh, the ground as he as he sort of stands with his back toward the the entrance of the barn. He's going to pull out his bow, and the horseman is going to make a pass. He's going to he's going to charge up with sword in hand, and he's going to make a pass. So let's let's do initiative. Oh. Plus four. Oh, that's not very good. But oh well. I have a thirteen initiative. And the horseman. Oh, his his initiative is ten. So I am actually going to be able to to attack. Okay. I am going to lose an arrow. Gonna use my new dice. I, I have a I have a brand new shiny D twenty uh, that I got from the Dungeons and Dragons My Little Pony set. Let's see how this does. Ooh, a fifteen. What is their armor class? Thirteen. Yes. Unfortunately, he is undead. Yes. Let's see. Condition immunities: blinded, deafened. Senses, dark vision, passive perception, eight. He, although he looks ghostly, he doesn't actually seem to be ghostly. He actually seems to be like an infernal demon or something. He is, I mean, he's undead, but he's not, he doesn't actually have, he doesn't have an immunity to normal, he doesn't have, he doesn't have a, an immunity to normal weapons. I can actually hit him. Oh, oh, that's fantastic. All right, let's see what kind of damage I can do. Short bow, short bow, short bow. Okay. Ooh. Nine. I did nine points of damage. As an arrow thwacks right into his shoulder. Yes, excellent. Well, he's he's actually got a really good... So let's see how this goes. Uh, he's going to attempt to hit me. Do, 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 do. Swing with a sword. <laughs> what, a three? I think he's going to miss. He's got a plus five to hit. Ooh, that's terrible. But, but my armor class is high enough. He is not going to be able to hit me. No, I have... I have I have a 16 armor class. He is not going to be able to hit me. Okay, I have to change my screen to side by side here so I can look at my I can look at my I can look at both things at once. Okay, there we go. So all right. The horseman is going to swing his horse around for another charge attack. And I am going to lose another arrow. Cocked die. Oh, that was awful. An arrow goes slinging off. Ooh, 17. 17 total. It's it's 12 plus 5. He is going to hit me. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see what kind of damage he does. Oh, ow. Ow. That's going to... That's gonna hurt. What is my what are my hit points at? Oh, he managed to hit me really, really, really well. Okay. Um oh I'm gonna I am going to withdraw back into the barn um as the horseman comes wheeling around. Uh and I am going to slam the doors of the barn shut as as the family uh Finishes, finishes harnessing up 
one of their ponies rather hastily. Um, yeah, it's I am I am hurt. I'm going to have to use a healing salve. Because uh, da, 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 I've only because that actually that that hit me for max damage. I am I am hurting. I've taken 11 points damage. I've got six hit points left, so I am definitely going to have to. I'm definitely going to have to use a healing salve here. Three points back. I'm at nine. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to have to use another one. Oh, another three. Back up to eleven. That's good enough, I suppose. Um, all right. Uh, well, I, I definitely don't think I can take on the horseman. Um, hmm. But I, I can, I can hopefully sort of keep the demon at bay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, he's, he's, I can, I can actually hear the, his horse pawing outside the door and, and flickering and, and ninning and just, just a high-pitched scream on the other side. And after, after a few minutes, they, they managed to get one of the ponies that, uh, attached to the wagon and the farmer's like, okay, so what do we do now? And I ready, I ready my bow again and I say well I'm I'm going to provide a distraction so you can get away uh, which is it's probably the best I can hope for at this point um, unless I get really lucky again uh, so that is what we are going to do um, yeah so all right everybody gets ready everybody gets into position Throw open the barn doors, um, and the wagon comes charging out, uh, and there's just just this maniacal laughter from the from the horseman. Which I can I can I actually have I actually noticed that he has? Yeah, it's he has no head. He just sort of has this like glowing flame like erupting out of his neck where his where his head used to be. Um, and I am going to loose an arrow at the rider. More of a distraction than anything else. Oh, a 14. A 14 is actually going to hit again. So let's see what kind of damage I can do. Oh. Oh, nine again. So let's... Okay. Well, I've hit him. But he's going to have... He's going to have a, is, oh, let me see, can I, oh, I've, I, I've completely forgot that Undead is my favorite enemy. Oh man, okay. You have advantage on survival checks to track your favorite enemies as well as intelligence check to recall information about them. Okay, because of my particular, because of my fey ancestry, I can actually turn into, I can actually, I can actually do a weird, like, little creepy, un, creepy magical thing. I can, I can actually turn into a cloud of mist, which <laughs> is a little, is a little weird, but, um, I, I don't think I can do that as a free action though. It says that I can cast it as a spell. So I actually have to be able to cast it. Okay. I can't do that as a free action, so I can't take an attack and then turn into mist. He still he still has he still has attack on me. So And he misses. I I definitely duck out of the way. And for my next next initiative though, I am in fact going to I am going to turn into a cloud of mist, which, and then I am going to start to drift away, uh, which is going to be a little weird. The, the, the infernal spirit is just, what, 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 what was that? 
am I am I dealing with some sort of magician? Yes. Okay. All right. I am going to sort of misty step over over to where I left my my horse over in front of in front of the uh, the house, and I am going and I'm going to resolidify and get on my horse and. We both seem to just be riding, we both seem to just be riding regular horses. So, wait a minute. Hold on. This. The horseman, the horseman is, has a speed of 30 feet. Hold on. I might, that might be a rather slow horse. Let's see. Riding horse. Speed is 60 feet. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here's the thing. The headless horseman, his speed is 30 feet. He's actually got, and he's on a horse. He is on a horse. But the speed that it is, that they, ha that the rider has listed this at has actually given him 30 feet. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's, if, if that is intentional. I, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe that is intentional to actually allow, to actually allow a character to run as, as necessary. The headless horseman laughs maniacally as, as he, as he rides his horse around the house following, following my misty form and and uh, I, I, and I come back to solid, and I hop on my horse as, as my dog is sort of frantically barking and, and running along the side, because the dog, poor dog, poor courage doesn't, courage is, is is actually he's he's named courage because he actually he does have a fair amount of courage, but he also doesn't entirely know what to do about this. He's not, he's not really so stupid as to actually like nip at the heels of of an infernal horse um but but yeah the the horse i i have a feeling that the speed of the horse is purposefully slowed so that you do actually have the option of running um which is which is actually one of the tactics uh that you you apparently you actually just literally help the family just get away from the horseman so that is precisely what i am going to do um i am going to get on my horse and i am going to take off and let's do 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 let's do some animal handling yeah yep that's my ride isn't particularly isn't particularly smooth but his is actually worse okay so I do actually manage to keep to keep ahead of him um, while I am on horseback and we are running. Um, I'm moving at almost twice the pace that he is. I am actually just going to start shooting at him because he can't, he can't reach me. He doesn't have, he doesn't have a, a distance attack. So that is precisely what I am going to do. I'm just going to turn around in my saddle and I'm just actually just going to start shooting at him because apparently I can just do that. And a 19 is definitely going to hit even at minuses uh, being rather unstable in the saddle. Oh, that's max damage. And the, the horseman isn't really going to, the horseman has definitely abandoned the, the family at this point because I am, I am definitely a danger to it. So he is actually just going to attempt to to run me down and I'm just kind of hoping that my horse because the this infernal horse although I'm actually going to rule that because this is an infernal horse that it is slow but it is steady it is not actually going to be able to to uh exhaustion is not going to be a thing with it so I'm going to attempt to loose another arrow which misses badly um, as, as the chase continues, uh, 
with some class again. 13. Nope, that one misses too. Let's make another check. Uh, that's a little worse. Although his his animal his his animal handling check is still worse than mine. So I am still definitely keeping ahead of him. Uh, even though I keep just my I just one edge more just one edge less that like my, my horse is starting to, to slow up a little bit. At least I, I don't at least have to ha force my horse into just an all out just move at maximum pace. At least I can actually keep my horse moving quickly but not not at not at its full speed because the horseman's horse even at full speed is half of of my horse's normal speed. So that it will at least give me a bonus. So as as long as as long as I keep that going. Nope. That one misses too. That one however hits. Let's see what kind of damage I can do. Uh, nine, no, eight. I am whittling this guy down. I, I legitimately am. I am actually whittling this guy down. I, I honestly did not notice that if, if I had, if I had known that like literally just getting on horseback, that it was actually just literally appropriate to just get on horseback and just fight this, fight this demon at a distance was actually a legitimate option. Because this is, I, I didn't even roll for, for recollection of, of stories of, I'm, I'm sure that I've, I've heard stories of ghostly riders along roads and things, but this particular, um, spirit I have never heard of before. So I really wouldn't, I, I didn't bother, um, rolling to see if I, if I knew that he was actually going to be, his, his horse was going to be moving this slow. But I am pleasantly surprised that his horse is actually this slow, which gives me the opportunity to, to attack. I am, he is, he is below half of his original hit points at this point. Um, so let's see. I just hope I have enough arrows. Uh, what's his armor class again? 13. Yeah, that hit. Um, I, I just, I just hope I have enough arrows to to actually just continue. I'm, I'm, my quiver is about half empty at this point. Okay, that's seven. Ooh, he is down to 15 hit points. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna need, need to refill my quiver definitely after this. Oh, that's, that's crap. All right, let's make another animal handling check. <laughs> oh! Oh, the horseman's, the horseman's horse stumbles a bit. Oh, he is. Yeah, I, I, I rolled a one for the horseman's animal handling. Oh, that's, I don't, actually at this point, I'm not going to have to roll an animal handling. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to have to roll an animal handling. I actually, I actually have to pull my horse to a, to a, to a stop and, and wheel, and wheel him around because that horse actually has to has to stop and sort of reorient its legs before it continues and that arrow just kind of goes way off. All right. A couple more. Oh, come on. Come on. I may actually I may actually have to pull my short swords and just and just ride right up and to try and finish them off cuz this is Okay, an, another arrow. Uh, seven points of damage. Well, okay. He's got eight hit points left. Um, okay. That, you know what, that is what I will do. I will actually ride my horse up. And... I get first attack, so... Just hoping. Well, the two is definitely not going to hit. Uh, the 19, however, is definitely going to hit. So let's see, short sword. Does he have, oh, no, I rolled a one. Oh, he's actually, I've only did, I've only done five points of damage. He is actually still, 
he is actually still standing. He, he He's only got three hit points left, but he can attack me. Oh, that's going to suck. You know what? I'm going to have... I'm actually going to have my dog. I'm actually going to have my dog because the horse has stopped and stumbled. I'm actually going to have my dog make an attack. Wow. My dog actually has plus four to hit. <laughs> I don't... Let's see. Um, a, a 19. Yes. What kind of... Let's see. D4 plus two. I don't... My dog is just like bounded up and grabbed a hold of of the horseman's leg. Oh, my my dog like literally just ripped right into his right into his freaking leg and has done 5 points of damage. Um and that pulls the horseman off of his horse. And the horse rears up and screeches in the night uh, and it dissipates into nothing just this this maniacal laughter just explodes as 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 the greenish blue light surrounding the horseman and his horse just sort of fade into the night and there is nothing and I am so very glad I have a dog. <laughs> oh, wow. I, it's like, good boy. Good courage. Wow. So, you know what? I, I, even if I didn't know that the, the honorific of Sir was just a joke, I would, I would knight my dog because that is absolutely fantastic. My dog just saved my hide. Okay. And as as the blue curled smoke of of the horseman and the horse dissipates, there there on the ground lies a little a little pumpkin. Just a, a tiny little a little tiny pie sized what what we what we what we around here would call a a a pie pumpkin, they're uh, I don't know uh, about the size of a, a softball or a little bit larger, uh, and it's carved out, and it has it looks like it has a little candle on the inside, and it's like okay, interesting, but yes. I, whew, that was, that was something. I, I, I pick up the pumpkin candle and I get back on my, and, and I, uh, get back up on my horse and I go find, and I go find the, uh, Hay Knight family. Uh, and and I tell them that there there shall be no need to run any longer. I have, I I and my dog Sir Sir Courage have have smited the horseman that plagued your family, and the farmer is so grateful that he gives me a little bag of coin, which is actually fifty gold pieces. He gives me fifty gold pieces. Oh, that's not really necessary, sir. I don't. I I I don't need the coin. Nonsense. You saved me and my family and smited an, an, evil, an evil being. I insist that you take this money. So, yes! That is... <laughs> that is... He was... The horseman was actually a challenge three. Um, I, I, I don't know. I might actually... Considering he... Considering I... I kind of messed up. I didn't notice that he actually had a multi-attack, uh, or else the very first time he attacked me, I would have I would have given his given the multi-attacks. But oh well, he was he was taunting me because he thought that he would be able to. That's I'll I'll say that that he was he was taunting me and he was going to attack me with his full attack this time since he was since he was um, heavily injured. By, by my just slowly whittling his hit points down, but uh, ooh, that was that was rather spooky and creepy. 
uh, attacked the headless horseman, and who I am, I am still injured, and I am, I am going to thank the family, um, and they're they're going to offer me, they're going to offer me a bed at their house, which I will actually gladly accept because I am, I am still injured, um, I'm still down from my max hit points, and I am going to gladly, I am going to gladly take their offer to to stay at their home for the night because that was that was definitely something again I didn't think that I was actually going to survive that but my dog came through for me hurrah sir courage oh I really the way I really does need to be a bit more careful just charging into things Oh, someone is in distress. I must charge into that. No, that's not. That's not really the way to go, pal. He's really. He really does need to learn this. He needs to be a bit more. I mean, he has been a bit more careful lately, but he needs. He definitely needs to. He has. He has that that low level PC invulnerability thing about him yet, and that needs to. That needs to change. He's because he's going to be. I believe he's going to be moving to third level at this point. I think I only need I think I only need 300 XP to get to to get to the next level, um, and the horseman has given me 700, so that will that will definitely get me to to next level. Um, I also need to look up to see if there's actually a way to give to give some levels to my dog because my dog definitely helped in taking this in taking this horseman down. I'm going to have to look that up. My dog definitely deserves some XP for that nonsense. So, all right. Well, that that was that was Luau's adventure of of the evening. Uh, the the headless horseman of the of the uh, Hay Knight Farm. Now that was that was rather interesting. I wish I didn't pay very much for this. It was it was on sale for ninety nine cents. It was it was a fine little adventure. I wish that it actually had a a little bit more detail as as far as um, what the farmer would say or do, uh, and and what the the horseman would do when in certain circumstances. But it just kind of gives just a map of the farm and just what's where locations of things are located, um, and the, the horseman, the horseman's, uh, details, and that's it, which is kind of, which is kind of, it, I mean, for 99 cents, that's fine, I just wish it had a little bit more, just, just a, just a little bit more to it, um, to, to, to add to the, to the adventure, um, I'm going to have to, the, there, there is a wondrous item, um, from from the adventure, the little the little pumpkin that I picked up is called the pump turn, as in a pumpkin lantern. Um, it, when lit, it lights a. It basically, it sheds a bright orange light in a fifteen foot radius, visible to the wielder and their allies only. So that's interesting. It's actually it is it is a light that only. That only I and my allies can actually use. Hmm. That's the pumpkin, the pump turn. The pump turn has three charges and regains 1d4 charges each dawn. Oh, that's, that's lovely. I love my little pumpkin light. That is a fantastic little magic item. I love, I love magic items that, that are, are exactly like this. That they're just that they're they're not very powerful, but they're really useful. They're just useful for for everyday things. Um, so that is fantastic. All right, well, that has been the that has been a spooky Halloween little mini adventure for uh, Luar, and he as he as he rests in the in the family farm, and then he will head back to town. Uh, then we'll head back to town just before dawn and, and go back to the caravan and head and slowly start to make his way back to his home city. Um, 
and and also checking to make uh, checking on his turtle, his little turtle named Jade, Jade. So, yep. Thanks for thanks for coming. Bye.